when my brain is functioning, um, I'm not sure how someone can be bored, you know? Mm. Bloody get creative and make fill in the gaps, you know? So um, I think maybe that's what they gave me, this sense that create your own fun, create your own uh, sense of curiosity and don't bug me because you've got the potential to, like any human, to just go and make something of the world. Mm. Yeah. We were totally underprepared. We were just two punk Aussies that, you know, I was the outdoor kid, so I had a lot of the outdoor stuff, but my mate didn't. So by the time my <laughs> gear was watered down to him, we were both very cold and very hungry. And, and you know, um, we had rules where we could only eat from servos and, you know, we took it in terms of thumbing out the front and the other one would hide in the bushes. And um, I suppose some of the, you know, we got very, very cold. We did one stint underneath the boat underneath a tinny on the back of someone's <laughs> ute for two hours when it was bucketing snow oh. and it was freaking cold, you know? And oh. uh, yeah, we ended up having a real long hug for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you mentioned the rules and, and sort of parameters for your challenges and, and you, you sort of, this is somewhat of a theme with a lot of your, your mm. things that you do. How do you sort of come up with them and, and why do you actually create some of these rules? Yeah, that's a good pickup because, um, most people just think you're doing these sort of harebrained things and they're either hard or not or whatever, but everything's hard uh, if you make it. A commute to work is bloody hard if you do it, you know, without food or water or if you walk rather than take a car. So it's just about saying, right, oh, here, here's this idea I've got and I'm going to strip back a few things to give it that sense of challenge or that sense of meaning or that sense of length. You know, when I drive to work, it takes an hour and 10. If you walk, it takes two days. Running can be incredibly meaningless. And so I thought, when I found out that my block is a mile long, I thought, all right, so mile is a famous distance. My name is Bo Miles and I love my block, but I've never run really a mile before. And so I just, I started to layer up this thing that, all right, I've got a mile long block. Maybe if I run enough laps, I could run a marathon. Yeah, but now that's pretty boring. Why don't I just do one lap an hour and then in between do a bunch of things? You know what, I mean? what, what do you mean by insight exactly? Like, Well, that's that's a good point. So insight is, um, this harks back to my PhD. I did, when you write a PhD, you have to come up with how you are going to draw out knowledge from whatever data you're trying to create. Because a PhD has to create data of some kind. And whether it's on yourself or on your best mate or on gardens or on the universe, you create data and you say something about it and you have to say something about it that's different or that hasn't been said before. Now, that has to be rigorous. So you then have to choose the tools that make it rigorous. And that's called methodology. Um, I do not do any kind of formal anything in a sense, although I have run, um, gee, I had six months off then when I was sad and, and didn't want to run. And I just, I was sort of over it for a lot of reasons. It was in between um, Helen and my former girlfriend. And I just sort of, that was the only time in my life that I haven't really run. Hmm. And so I've run between three and seven times a week for 25 years. So hmm. I've always run, right? Thousands of kilometers. And that's where I do my thinking. And yeah, an epiphany takes time. And, and I did have one recently when I, I recently ate my body weight in, in beans. So I read a Steinbeck book and that's my next film that's coming out shortly. And halfway through that process. So for 39 days, all I ate is beans out of tins and halfway through it, I've just been to a conference in Western Australia and I was giving a talk and I couldn't have the banquet that they put on that night. And I left and went back to the airport and, as I'm leaving from the, the presentation to the airport, it was about a four hour drive and ha halfway along, I stopped and sat on the curb at a, at a trucker stop at a petrol station and just thought, you know what, this is, this is crazy. Why, why am I eating only beans? I feel horrible. You know, I've got uh, use less, waste less, uh, I suppose. But fundamentally it comes back and I still waste too much uh, or rather buy too much. I recycle everything or, or reuse it. Reusing is better than recycling, but better than all that is not buying it in the first place hmm. and making it yourself or making it out of something you've already got or wouldn't have thought that you could make it out of. Um, it does require some skills, but it doesn't require much skill. It just requires a bit of thought. Um, does, you know, people talk a lot about like happiness and, and these sort of things. And, you know, there's obviously you know, different ways to find it, but what does it actually mean to you, happiness? 
That's another, you guys are asking good questions because um, I, uh, we were given recently a book um, about making happy children. You know, when you have, a, have your first child, everyone gives you books about how to raise children, which are just, they're really good. They're good sentiments. They're well written. They're bestsellers. You know, millions of people have read these books. And one of them that Helen's reading at the moment, and I've only read the blurb. So I'm ganging up on this book for probably the wrong reasons. But, um, I don't necessarily, I'm not in pursuit of happiness. And I, nor will I teach our child to be in pursuit of happiness. Uh, I, I want to teach fortitude and, and mm. challenge and friendliness. I teach friendliness over happiness any day of the week. Waking at dawn, packing the gear.